Hey guys, it's Kaylee. I am back with another thrift haul. Nikki and I went sourcing today and we've got a bunch of goodies that I'm excited to share with you. Um, I do have a little bit of data here uh, from our sourcing spreadsheet. I did not get to input all of the informa information that I would need uh, to be able to give you guys exact numbers, but I do have a good idea of what we got today. Um, the main reason I can't give exact numbers is because there's still a lot of stuff that needs priced. Um, but I got about 35 items today, which is significantly less than what we normally get. Um, and as we've worked on increasing our average sale price, um, we have been focusing on getting to more stores and finding better items versus a big quantity of items. And honestly, I've been loving it. It's been working really well. Um, I was actually just pulling up, um, doing my sales spreadsheet because um, we just hit August um, and I was really excited to dig into July's numbers as a whole and figure out where we were at to see if increasing our average sale price was working and it is so very excited with that but just on the day-to-day -day, as far as sourcing goes we're definitely bringing in less items which means we are having to process less items which also means we are shipping out less items um, however even though that workload has dropped, the sales have pretty much stayed the same, if not gotten better, because of an increase of average sale price. And we were able to do that in just about a month of focusing on average sale price, which is really cool. And so I'm excited to see what this will look like maybe like six months from now as we refocus on finding more quality items versus um, racing to the bottom and just focusing on quantity. Nothing wrong with that. Um, if you do want to do a quantity business, it's just not for me. I was spinning my wheels and, you know, I do have employees that I pay. Um, so for every item that gets listed, I have to pay somebody to list that. Um, and so it, it, you know, eats into profits a lot. So I want to increase my average sale price. It's what's working for me. So we got about 35 items uh, today, which again is significantly less. Um, however, I think, again, I've got to price some items, but I think my average sale price is going to round out to... Um, somewhere between 40 and 50 dollars this particular day um, after we price some of the stuff but i'm looking at this here our lowest price that we picked something up for was 25 dollars. there are some like really quick flip sell-through rate items um, that we're still getting at 25 dollars but they have to have a good sell through rate. And so I'll be excited to share those with you today. Um, but I need to process some of these. Some of them need wash. Some of them need to put into um, a separate tote. And I'll talk about that here in a second, but I'm gonna stop talking <laughs> and let's dive in. And I've got my comps here um, in case I need them. So I'll just dive in to the excess stuff real quick. The stuff that I'm separating um, is because I know that in order to sell it at the prices I want that I need to get it listed immediately. And I will talk about that briefly before diving into the rest of the like one-off items. So um, there have been many times where Goodwill, um, another chain thrift store um, in my area, all of them within that chain will get a buyout or liquidation of some certain brand. Um, I don't know if you guys remember, but like about a year ago, we brought in a ton of Prana stuff um, because Goodwill's in our area like got liquidation basically from um, a store, I think that was going out of business. Um, I also had the same thing happen with the brand Reese, um, R-E-I-S-S, -S, and I've also had that happen with Lily Pulitzer items. So what happens when I come across a bulk amount of the same brand at a thrift store is, the first thing I used to do was get really excited and buy them all. <laughs> um, I no longer do that. And so if you're listening to this and you've come across this situation, um, I would recommend listening because I've made some mistakes and I'd love to share those mistakes with you so that you can avoid them. Uh, but I used to just get excited because I'd find a really great brand like Prana, for example. You know, a year ago, Prana was really, really good. And so I would want to buy up everything. However, what you have to keep in mind is whenever a thrift store gets a bulk amount of the same item in or the same brand, that means that your competition is also probably purchasing those and listing those exact same items. It's kind of along the same concept of, of liquidation um, 
or people that buy, you know, pallets to resell on eBay and Poshmark, kind of along those same lines. You've got competition with the exact same items. And so in order for yours to sell over someone else's, you have to be the lowest priced um, or you have to have one of the more uh, unique styles that, you know, there was a small quantity of. So my perspective of that has changed a lot. I no longer get excited. I actually feel like I should avoid <laughs> those items if I come across them. Um, but we have had some success, um, both in the case of the Prana items, the Lily Pulitzer and the Reese items where we won't pick up if there's like, you know, 50 of the same style somewhere, I avoid those styles pretty much completely. Um, unless there's like a really good comp and I know that I'm gonna get all of them. Um, but more than likely those items with all of those quantities um, don't have good comps typically. Um, and also you have to think about, let's say it's a Goodwill. You have to think about, okay, if this Goodwill that I'm at got 50 of these in. I wonder what surrounding Goodwills also got in. So you have to keep that in mind that your competition might be getting them from other locations as well. Um, and it's just, it's just not feasible <laughs> to sell that stuff when there are a ton of them out there. Um, and again, it'll be a race to the bottom. So my strategy in the past um, and what has been successful for us is to focus on the styles that have the least amount of quantity definitely doing comps and looking up to make sure there's a good sell through rate. And then what I personally do, just in case competition is getting those same styles is I, it's like the first thing I list. So if you guys look behind me, all of this stuff is unlisted inventory. Um, anything that we purchase today typically does not get listed for two weeks out. So I am sourced that far ahead that we're not listing any items that we purchase until typically two weeks out. Um, and even then, um, when we do list them, we're scheduled ahead, so then we're scheduling two weeks out. So anything I bring in today is typically not going to be active until a month later. So I really have to keep that in mind. But what I do um, when this type of stuff happens is I will pull it ahead of schedule. So for these items that I'm gonna, going to show you, um, I'm actually going to make a tote and I'm gonna list them tomorrow. That way, if there was anyone else that got these styles at other locations, um, I'll be the first one to list them. I will set the comp and I will go from there. And hopefully that's not too long of an explanation, but you do have to be really mindful, especially if you're a newer reseller, not to get super excited. Um, I think Nikki said she was just talking to someone um, at a thrift store the other day and they were talking about that Prana situation. And a lot of people were like, yeah, I actually got hung on those. I still have those sitting in my closet, um, but we don't. We sold through all of them because we were very picky. We got ours listed really quickly and they were able to sell out really quickly before anyone else listed and the market kind of died down. So kind of a tricky game, um, but it's one that I'm playing and those are my strategies. So you guys are like, let's dive into this haul. You've been talking for a while. Okay. We're eight minutes in, I need to get going. So I'm gonna briefly just show you the pieces that I got. They're all by the same brand. It is LK Bennett or Benet, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, London. They are all new with tags, uh, which is really awesome. And they don't really have defects. There's a couple of them with like slight little spots that you consider a possible defect, but in general, they're all in really great condition. Um, if you guys don't know, this stuff retails for like four to five hundred dollars. Um, some of them are slightly less than that, but um, like these dresses right here, I have new with tags with the actual um, store price on them. And it's like close to five hundred dollars, so it's crazy. So, um, what I did is I tried to look up this specific style. The style is Susie, and I found that information on the tag could not find anything about it. So I'm thinking this is a newer style. Um, and then, so because I didn't have the style I could rely on, I just looked up LK Bennett dresses and then filtered a new with tags and then looked at the sell through rate from there. The sell through rate was not 100%, but it had enough 
good sell-through rate that I felt very comfortable purchasing these and knowing that I could probably drop the price uh, slightly lower than everyone else to get the item moving. But I sell solds like a lot of them knew with tags were going over $100 very consistently. Um, so I feel, very, <laughs> I feel very confident with my purchases. Plus I have multiples of the same one just in different sizes. So it's gonna be really easy to make those listings. So this is the first dress. Like I said, it is the style Susie. It's got a print to it. Um, and again, it is new with tags. So I'm very excited about that. I paid $10, only $10 for each of these. And I'm pretty confident I'm gonna be able to sell them all for over, well, these ones for over $100. Um, possibly the other ones slightly less than that or slightly more, I gotta do some more research. But these particular ones, definitely. This is the same uh, style, just in a different, uh, a different colorway and pattern. Look, four hundred and fifteen dollars. People, I don't, I don't know. Um, I don't think it was someone that donated their collection. That's what I was about to say. People are donating this. What? Uh, but I actually think that this must have been like a buyout of some sort um, because there was a lot of other brands there that I left behind. Uh, same thing, same exact dress, just a different size. And then I found like, I don't know, like five of these ones. So these are, I'm pretty sure silk, but I would have gotten them even if not. Yes, silk. Um, this is called the style Lori. And it is a very, very pretty, like faux wrap pleated silk dress. I'm gonna get these listed very, very quickly, not only because of competition, but also seasonality. Um, because, you know, silk dresses, nobody's gonna be wearing those in the fall. So I'm gonna get those listed. Like I said, there was like five or six of those and I'm just kind of dumping those in. Uh, here's another. Oh, no, that's not the same one. Um, I also got a really pretty new with tags velvet ruched side midi dress. I thought this would be really good for the holidays. Uh, velvet's really popular, very luxe looking. Um, so this one actually might sell during fall and winter, but I'm again going to get it ahead of, ahead of my competition. Um, and I got two of those. And then I believe this is the last LK Bennett that I found. Maybe another one will pop up, but I'm pretty sure that this is it. I also found this jumpsuit. Also new with tags. This one retailed for, again, around $400. This is called Karen. And again, I paid $9.99 for all of these. Really cute. I'll probably pop all of these onto my hanging mannequin. Uh, just because, you know, it is a nicer item and try to present it really well to the buyer. So um, slide that underneath. So I'm gonna get all of those listed pretty much immediately and uh, hope for some quick sales on that. But even if I have to wait on it, I mean, it's some really good average sale price. And even if they don't sell and I end up dry, dropping the price slightly, I mean, if I were paying $10, but I knew it was a good sell through rate, um, I'd still be okay selling it for like $50, you know? So even if after all those months I price drop and it ends up selling for 50, I'll still make quite a bit of money. So I was pretty excited about that. All right, next up, turn this back on here so we can see comps. Um, this one is something I took a chance on. So everything else should be um, more one-off items. Um, this is something I took a chance on. I actually just came across this brand in wholesale. It's called Blue Fish. Um, I found a lot more information about it on Poshmark um, than I did on eBay, but it's made in USA. They're organic and natural fibers, um, and they're very like log and look hippie brand. And this one is a midi length dress, and a lot of them seemed... Um, hand-painted too is what I saw and this one does feel hand-painted so very on trend with the login look um, the reason I said I took a chance on it is because um, not the best sell through rate on eBay but on Poshmark I saw some really great comps this one is new with tags 
it retails for $198. Um, so I feel pretty good about that. This is also, I believe, a 2X. I think this is a plus size. I paid $14.99 for it, but I'm going to list it for $75. Um, I saw some of them going for much more than that. Um, so I'm being a little bit conservative on that, but I felt pretty good um, about picking that up and just taking the chance on it for those profits. All right, next up is an Eileen Fisher tunic top. This does uh, feel like linen. And it does say Eileen Fisher woman, which means it is a plus size. However, the size is missing. So we are going to compare to the Eileen Fisher size chart on their website and determine based on measurements where this falls and make sure to note that in the listing. But I couldn't pass this up because linen plus size and Eileen Fisher, like this should go for quite a bit. Um, I haven't priced it yet because I want to determine size, but I feel like it's probably going to go for like $40 to $50. Um, and I paid $4.99 for that one. This is definitely a bread and butter. I paid $5.99 for this. It's a Knox Rose midi length dress. Kind of like off the shoulder puff sleeve, very bohemian, tiered, lots of good things. Um, it is a size large, so not the largest size, but it should still flip quickly. Um, and I paid, I said I paid $5.99. I'll probably list that at $25 just to make sure it moves as we near toward um, a different season. This was a surprising pickup for me. This is the brand Notori. I've sold some of their pajamas before. Um, this is a size large, so pretty good size. I paid $4.99. So this just looked really gorgeous. <laughs> um, I love going to the sleepwear section and looking for stuff because a lot of gyms get passed on. This is like a maxi length, almost like a kimono-esque caftan dress, nightgown kind of thing. Um, so I looked this up and there were really good comps for it actually. Um, this one has a small spot on the sleeve, so I'm going to try to get that out. Um, if it comes out, I'll probably list it around 50. If it doesn't come out, I will list it for around 40 or $45. Um, but really great pickup. And if you guys see anything really interesting, um, even if it is a sleepwear brand, I definitely look it up. Um, a lot of the sellers that I saw um, with that similar style and in different prints use the word geisha in it and it seemed to help it sell so i'll be using that keyword as well this is more of a bread and butter i've talked about this a lot they're kind of like the express portofino tops they're tried and true they have a good sell through rate but they don't sell for much torrid harper top size four we paid 3.99 we'll list it for 25 and it should move quickly so still picking up some bread and butter but um, again, high sell to rate items that we know sell well every time. Um, I found this gym still with the rip tag, Lululemon size 14. I don't know the style. I'm going to look it up, but it is a long sleeve, larger size women's um, top. It might be the Swiftly. I don't know. I'm starting to learn the styles. That's probably not not the right one, but that's what it reminds me of. I paid $6.99 for that. I need to do some more research, but I'm guessing I'll probably be able to get around $35 for that. Uh, this one, I did a Google lens on to find the exact style. It is Bowden. Main reason I looked it up was because it did have like an interesting, very specific print and it was a size 16. So a much larger size. Um, and Bowdoin larger sizes do pretty good for me. I paid only $3.99. I forget what this is called, but there's a specific name for the top. It's got some really cute uh, print to it. And I'm going to list it for $25. What was this one called? Let's see. The Cara top. All right. Next up is a Lily Pulitzer size large. That's definitely going to help. Um, it to sell faster. Flamingo top. We paid $9.99, so $10 for this. Nikki found this one. Let's see what she priced it for. She priced this at $45. It is silk and it's called the Elsa top. Okay, this one needs a good wash, <laughs> but I got it. 
because it's pretty tried and true. Uh, this is a pair of Spanx pull-on pair of black jeans. I find that Spanx jeans and pants in general perform better in fall and winter. Um, so I'm looking forward to the sell through rate increasing on those, but still we sell them pretty well. I paid $6.99 for those. Um, I need to wash them, um, but they should all come out. Um, I'm going to look up the style on those. I don't know specifically yet, but if I had to guess, probably 35 on those. All right, this is a an anthropology brand that Nikki found. It's called Daughters of Liberation. And she kind of took a chance on this because sell-through rate for winter and fall items, like I mentioned, is not accurate now to what it's going to be like in like a month or two when people are buying all this stuff. So we're having to rely on our knowledge from previous years, but an anthropology coat, longer length, very good condition. Um, this is a size small, but it's pretty roomy and it looks like a more uh, modern style. And let me see here. What did she put this at? She marked it for $50. All right, this is one teaspoon pair of jeans. We're gonna list these for 50 bucks. I do need to give them a wash, um, but they're in pretty good condition. And they are the like, I think they're called the like baggy style. And yeah, that brand performs really well for me. I actually had a buyer, funny story, my aim is off today. Funny story, we had um, a buyer. So like on Poshmark, if you get a rating less than five stars, um, they ask the buyer what you could have done, done better and you're allowed to put like comments and different things. Um, so I've been having Marley who's now our new office lead, um, handling like customer feedback, buyer feedback, and looking at that every day. And if we see anything that is less than perfect, basically, taking that into account, bringing it to the team, handling it with a buyer if we need to, to make things right. So I came across a uh, Poshmark buyer's bad review of their one teaspoon jean short item. And basically she, she didn't open a case or anything, which she probably should have, she felt that way, but she just gave us a bad review, didn't open up a case and left poor feedback. Um, and she said that the one teaspoon jean shorts were not authentic and that they weren't real denim. <laughs> and so I'm looking into these shorts, right? And the fabric tag has some, you know, it's like partially elastic for that stretch. I'm not a one teaspoon expert, but I'm pretty sure that they make um, some softer feeling, kind of stretchier jeans. I've sold many of them in the past. Um, so anyways, we did some investigating. They are indeed authentic, looked on their website and all that stuff. Um, but I just think it's funny how people have these perceptions of what something is supposed to be and then just without any warning leave feedback. So I didn't touch it because technically we can't prove that they are authentic because I don't have a tag from an authorized dealer. I just have a Goodwill uh, receipt, which does not work in reselling platforms eyes. But we left that one alone, but I just thought it was funny. That reminded me of it. All right, back into the thrift haul. I am very chatty today. <laughs> um, these are a pair of Athleta pants. They are called the Cabo Retreat Linen Pant in a six tall, pretty much Almost any um, Athleta pair of pants that aren't their leggings perform well for me. Um, and definitely linen pants do pretty well. Um, I am going to list these for around $35. We paid $4.99 for them. Found another pair of Spanx today. They were at a different store too. Size small. These are a pair of velvet leggings. Very luxe feeling and looking. Again, I think those will do better Actually, do I need to wash these? I don't think I do. I think it was just those other ones. Um, yep, okay, we're good on these. Um, I think they're, they're gonna do better here in a couple months, so I might recomp them then, um, but right now I'm planning on listing them for around $35. Um, this one I have not priced yet. I'm gonna wait and actually price it um, about a month from now when we go to list it just because I think comps are gonna change and I'll have a more accurate idea um, of 
how much I'm going to get for this item. It is a Vince item, not typically a brand that I like to get. However, this is a wool yak alpaca cashmere sweater. So all the nice fabrics for fall and winter wrapped into one. It is a longer length. I just noticed a hole in the elbow. Shoot. Um, but leather trim, uh, nice sweater. So I'm going to note that and I'll have to definitely account that into the pricing. I swear it's like you look them up and you look them up and down. And for some reason, when you bring them home, you find more stuff. It's just how it goes, I guess. But I still think we'll get a decent amount off of that. Again, I'm going to do research as it gets closer to fall and winter. I am guessing, and this is just a guess, um, but I am guessing that I'll probably get with that flaw about $40 for it. This was an awesome find, but one that I have to wash. It is Arcteryx. Second time finding it at that specific store. This is a women's size large. It is a sweater. I have no idea what I'm going to get for this, but I bet it's a lot. I pick up everything Arcteryx. This is definitely a bolo if you guys find it. Um, I've even sold stuff in poor condition and it sells for quite a bit of money. So um, definitely worth looking into. Those are a keep purchase. All right, picking up some more fall and winter stuff. This is kind of bread and butter. It is an Ann Taylor cashmere tur turtleneck sweater. And now I'm like looking over this because I feel like it's going to be like that Vince sweater, but no, it looks in good condition. Um, I'm listing that for 30. I might recomp it as we move closer because um, it might sell for more. This is a pretty decent brand, not 100% sell through rate, but willing to sit on it for the right price. It is Acris Punto. These are a pair of wool dress pants. And in my opinion, dress pants are kind of what this brand is known for. Um, I don't know what Nikki priced these for. Let's see. $60. Wow. It's better than I thought. I was going to say 40 to 50. All right. Last bag. All right. We have bread and butter. Life is good. I think this was half off. 20 bucks. I usually like to stick to larger sizes, but it was discounted. We found a very heavy Lululemon reversible long sleeve women's top. Um, it's also like a double layer too. Um, I don't know what that is, so I'll have to look that up, but I'm going to guess around 30. A pair of Judy Blue jeans skinny fit capri these had like a 200 percent sell through rate in this size the size is a size 13. they do have junior sizing um they sell really well these are distress capri fit kind of an undone hem and i paid 8.99 for these probably gonna list for 35. these are a keep purchase i've been having a lot of keep purchases lately i need to I need to cut it out um, next up is definitely more of a summer item. CC California, 100% linen pants, size small. I noticed that the multicolor wide leg ones were doing well. Um, and I thought these were gorgeous. I'm only going to list them for 25, but I think they should sell quickly. Um, and I might do a video on this, but I think here in a couple days, Nikki and I are actually going to go through these bins and pull everything like hot weather related summer stuff like linen pull them ahead create a new spreadsheet delete them off of the spreadsheets that they are currently in and have the employees list those first um, and then that way all of the fall and winter stuff gets listed after that um, just to capture some of those like warmer weather sales before the weather starts changing so i do think we're going to do that pretty soon um this is a Nike tee. This is definitely, I do not recommend this. I, I would not say to get Nike men's tees, um, but this is a pretty interesting one. It's like an all over Kyrie, Kyrie Irving print one, and we're going to list it for 25 bucks. So um, there are some like more specific ones that might do well, but in general, I would say probably skip those. 
This is another Lululemon women's long sleeve. This looks like the same style possibly as the other one. Um, I've got to do a Google lens on these and figure it out because um, I don't think these have a size dot. Pretty sure they don't. Yeah, we'll have to do a Google lens. Um, probably 30 bucks on that is where I would guess it would be at. This one also needs washed. Gonna have to pull that. All right, this is a Liberty uh, fabric J. Crew collaboration pair of pajama pants. Did not find a lot of information about just the pajama pants, but I do know that this fabric in J. Crew tends to perform well. Um, I'm gonna list these for 25 bucks. Paid $4.99. These are Gap, not a brand I normally get, but they are a men's size large. They are corduroy, which I anticipate being popular again this fall and winter. And they are a pair of tapered joggers. So I really like the style of these. Um, I did see some that were doing pretty well. I'm gonna list those for 30. And last item is an Under Armour golf pant, but it's got a specific style, these showdown pants. These have a really good sell through rate. And let's see, Nikki found this. Let's see what she listed it for, $30. Um, in general, Under Armour golf pants doing pretty well. Probably not gonna do well here in a few weeks. So just keep that in mind. Um, but if you do have them, I would get them listed because while people are still golfing, they do have a really good sell through rate and they tend to be really great bread and butter uh, during this time of the year. So that is it for today's thrift haul. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. Let me know what you think about those LK Bennett's or Benet's. I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. Uh, from the beginning of this video, would you have picked those up knowing that there possibly could have been more um, at other locations? I felt pretty confident because of the sell-through rate that I saw in general for that brand in dresses on eBay. Um, and I saw some really great comps on Poshmark as well. So I feel pretty good about it, but let me know if you would have picked them up down below at $9.99 each. I did pay up for those, um, but I look forward to listing those tomorrow and hopefully showing them in the what sold videos. That's all I have for you guys today. Um, if you like thrift hauls and you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, um, if you would like to, you can subscribe down below. And if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified every single time I post a thrift haul. And I'd love to have you guys comment down below um, and let me know if you're new to the channel. But that's all I have. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.